United States on Tuesday raised its level of concern of a potentially imminent Russian attack against Ukraine, warning ahead of talks between the top U.S. and Russian diplomats that no option would be off the table when it comes to a Western response. Quote, we believe we're now at a stage where Russia could at any point launch an attack on Ukraine, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said. Quote, I would say that's more stark than we have been. With tens of thousands of Russian troops massed on Ukraine's borders, diplomatic efforts are intensifying to avoid war on Europe's eastern fringe. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is flying to Ukraine for talks on Wednesday, with stops later in Berlin to meet European allies on Thursday, and Geneva to sit down with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Friday. Russia insists it has no plans to invade Ukraine, where in 2014 it already seized one province and backed separatist rebels in another region. However, Moscow's massive buildup of offensive weaponry and troops leaves little doubt at least of a potential assault is being prepared as a way to back the Kremlin's broader aim of preventing pro-Western Ukraine from leaving the Russian sphere of influence Among Russia's demands is a pledge from the NATO alliance that it never offer Ukraine membership, something NATO calls a non-starter. The latest U.S. comments appear to reflect an increasingly grim view of the standoff. Saki blamed Russia's leaders, saying, quote, President Putin has created the crisis and warned again that unprecedented economic sanctions would follow a Russian attack against Ukraine. U.S. voting legislation that's a top priority for Democrats and civil rights leaders seems headed for defeat in the Senate Tuesday, a devastating setback enabled by President Joe Biden's own party as two holdout senators refused to support rule changes. The Democratic senators, Kristen Sinema of Arizona and Joe Manchin of West Virginia, face strong criticism from black leaders and civil rights organizations for failing to take on what critics call the Jim Crow filibuster. The debate carries echoes of an earlier era when the Senate filibuster was deployed by opponents of civil rights legislation. It comes as Democrats and other voting advocates nationwide warn Republican-led states are passing laws making it more difficult for black Americans and others to vote by consolidating polling locations requiring certain types of identification and ordering other changes. This is the fifth time the Senate will try to pass voting legislation this Congress. AT&T and Verizon on Tuesday agreed to temporarily defer turning on some wireless towers near key airports to avert a significant disruption to U.S. flights. President Joe Biden hailed the agreement saying it would, quote, potentially avoid devastating disruptions to passenger travel, cargo operations, and our economic recovery while allowing more than 90% of wireless tower deployment to occur as scheduled. The carriers and the administration have agreed to work together to quickly address the issues and create a process to allow the remaining towers to be deployed. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration had warned that 5G wireless interference could affect sensitive airplane instruments. This is the third time that AT&T and Verizon agreed to delay deployment of the new C-band 5G wireless service. Anders Breivik, the Norwegian far-right fanatic who killed 77 people in a bomb, bomb and gun massacre in 2011, argued Tuesday for an early release from prison, telling a parole judge he had renounced violence, even as he professed white supremacist views and flashed Nazi salutes. Revik, who is 42 and serving Norway's maximum 21-year sentence for setting off a bomb in Oslo's government district and carrying out a shooting massacre at a summer camp for left-wing youth activists. But under Norwegian law, he's eligible for his first parole hearing after 10 years in prison.